All right, welcome back to Tip Tuesday. My name is Tim, and we will be going through adjusting your disc brakes on your e-bike. Um, almost every single bike is going to require some sort of adjustment along the way, uh, even if your bike is brand new and out of the box, and we're gonna run through how to do that. Um, a couple of tools you may need to start with is your trusty five millimeter hex tool, um, a white piece of paper or something light colored, um, possibly an adjustable wrench or a rotor truing tool. I think that's about it. A um, Couple things to start with to check right before you know that you'll need any adjustments to occur on your disc brakes is just to spin the wheels, listen for any sounds that you may hear, notice if there's any rubbing or anything like that going on. Um, you'll want to give the lever a couple of squeezes at the very beginning to make sure that everything is moving properly and then we'll get into the adjustments. So a couple of things to check as well is that your barrel adjusters, you've got two on your bike, one on the caliper itself right here and the other is on the lever itself. You want to make sure that those are threaded all the way in to begin with. You might use those a little bit later but just want to give you the maximum amount of adjustment space. So you'll thread those all the way in, both on the lever and on the caliper, all the way in. Uh, next step um, is you want to make sure that your cable pinch bolt is tight. Good to go ahead and have it loose to begin with so that the cable can float freely through there. Pull that tight. The important thing to remember at this point is not to preload that swing arm for the caliper. You'll be able to adjust that a little bit later for cable tension uh, using your barrel adjusters both from the caliper end and from the lever end as, as needed. Um, next step is using that light color piece of paper, um, looking directly down through the caliper, noting the relationship between the caliper and the brake rotor. Uh, that white piece of paper on the ground right there will really help you do that so that you have a contrasting color in order to be able to discern how far the caliper needs to move in either direction. Um, as you'll notice, the rear hub motor on your bike is going to prevent access to any easy adjustments on the caliper. And I'll show you how to go through that and to adjust that without causing too much stress. So first couple things to do is to at least look down in that direction. See if the caliper is you know, skewed off to the left, skewed off to the right, as the case may be. which in this particular case, there's a very large gap on both sides, which is not the worst thing in the world. So what you wanna do is because there is only one brake pad that is adjustable and one static pad, you wanna make sure that the adjustable pad is available for adjustment. So the two bolts that go in from the side here, you can remove those and the caliper and the adapter come off together. So we're gonna dial in that adjustable pad a little bit and then put everything back together. Throughout this process, it is really important uh, to make sure that you're not touching the brake rotor itself, especially with your fingers. Not that everybody is really that dirty, but everybody has oils on their fingers that can transfer to the rotor. If it transfers to the rotor, it'll likely transfer to the pads and you can contaminate the system like that. So we'll snug these down, but we're not gonna get these quite to torque just yet because we may have to pull them off and make other adjustments along the way. So now that we've adjusted the adjustable pad, we've brought that in just a little bit to kind of close that gap. You give the wheel a spin. I don't hear any contact being made, uh, which is definitely a good thing. If you notice that when you are spinning the wheel, if you're getting some contact, what, again, what you wanna do is look back down in the same direction, see which end of the brake pads are making contact with the rotor as it spins and adjust accordingly. So in this particular case, we'll give the lever a squeeze. Not bad. 
if you can see it from that, from that angle, the lever comes further in toward that grip than is typically a good adjustment portion of this should be that the lever itself runs parallel to the grip. If you notice that you're coming in further, although all of the system will flex a little bit, you should notice that initial bite point where the lever is parallel to the grip. If that's the case, you'll know that we need to make other adjustments. So again, we'll come back here, use those good eyeballs of yours, look down into that gap, see where there's a larger gap on either side of the rotor, and we'll adjust accordingly. If the gap is closer to the arm pivoting point of that brake caliper, what we'll want to do is loosen the two adjusting bolts of the caliper. I'll show you, I'm going to take this off. Okay, so there's four sets of bolts associated with your brake caliper. Two that attach the adapter to the frame and two that attach the caliper to the adapter. The two that, ac that attach the caliper to the adapter are the ones that you're going to use to adjust the caliper in relationship to the rotor. So let's get this back together here. So at this point, for how the caliper is sitting in relation to the rotor, the gap that exists between the rotor and the pads is larger on this side, on the articulating arm side. So what we want to do is loosen the two bolts that attach the caliper to the adapter. We're just loosening them. We don't have to remove them. We're going to loosen them. We're going to slide the caliper inward slightly, close that gap, and then we're going to adjust the adjustable pad to meet so that we can get a little bit better engagement of that lever. So now we've slid the caliper inward slightly or inboard slightly. Give the wheel a quick spin, knowing that the knowing that there's not any contact being made. Again, since we're going to have to adjust the adjustable pad, pull the adapter mounting bolts back off, remove this. We'll dial this in, I'd say another maybe half turn. And let's see how we did. So with your fixing bolt snugged, notice that sound means that we adjusted that static, we adjusted the adjustable pad too far in. Just to make sure that everything is seated correctly, you want to give that lever a couple of squeezes. Test again. Still making some contact, no big deal. Let's back that, let's back that pad out just a little bit. So we're gonna unscrew that about a quarter turn. And we check again. Okay. Still making a little noise, no big deal. Again, we're just gonna check the alignment. May have to move it around a little bit. Okay, now we got everything centered back up. Give the wheel a spin, no contact being made, great. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight how difficult this can be. Um, if it's not something that you're comfortable with doing, have no fear. Uh, we as, our, as the Gen 3 support team are here to help. Um, we can talk you through this kind of stuff. We can recommend taking it to a local bike shop. We can recommend um, having Velo Tooler or Velo Fix come to you to do this. Uh, this is definitely not something that we have any expectations that you're going to be a master at immediately. Um, just to speak from experience, uh, I've been doing this for about 17 years. And as you can tell, it, I don't make this look easy. Um, and most of the times, it's not. Um, so if you get discouraged, no big deal. This is totally normal. Um, aside from that, once you're at this point, after we've gotten um, all our fixing bolts tightened down again, so at least everything is in the right place, it may not be at these, the specified torque settings for all the fixing bolts, um, we are at least getting to the point now where we're able to make our fine tune adjustments. So as you can tell, the lever engages sooner than it did just a second ago, but it's still not perfectly parallel. But at least we're at the point now where the wheel 
can spin without any extra contact being made. So from here is where we're going to employ the usage of your barrel adjusters in order to get that fine-tuned brake feel. So you can spin the wheel, unscrew those barrel adjusters, and you can watch that articulating arm move closer and closer to the body of that caliper. And every time you turn that barrel adjuster, you notice that the lever starts to engage sooner each time. Now, I typically will recommend that people don't use the barrel adjuster at the lever because it's so much more difficult to make an adjustment down here as you're riding the bike. If you notice that as you're riding, you want the brake to engage sooner, you can make those adjustments on the fly. At this point, wheel still spins great, no contact being made, lever comes parallel to the grip. I'd say this is a win. Um, all barrel adjusters will have a small lock ring that you can use to make sure that the barrel adjuster itself doesn't move without, doesn't move on purpose. Um, so we'll tighten that guy down. You're good there. Want to make sure that your cable pinch bolt is nice and snug. Make sure that your fixing bolts against the frame are nice and snug. If you have a torque wrench, great. Uh, the torque setting for these two fixing bolts that attach the adapter to the frame are anywhere between 12 and 14 Newton meters. The torque for the bolts that attach the caliper to the adapter um, are going to be closer to 10 Newton meters, not 12. And the reason being is so that you can adjust those a little bit more easily. Um, Again, if you have any other questions, uh, if you have any other concerns with your bike, not even just related to the brakes, uh, give us a shout here at the Support Center. Um, you can find us at 888-884-4346. Um, additionally, we have a chat function on our website that you can contact us, or if you want to just shoot us an email, uh, that email address is support at gen3ride.com.